ever catch yourself like daydreaming about the perfect country, you know? If you could hit reset and build a nation from scratch. Okay, yeah, I've been down that rabbit hole a time or two. It's a fun thought experiment. Right. Well, today we're diving into one person's incredibly detailed answer to that question. And uh, trust me, it gets a lot deeper than you might think. We're digging into this conversation between an individual named Booz and an AI. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, great. Another AI chat. But this isn't some surface level exchange. Definitely not. Yeah. It's like listening in on a brainstorming session between like a really passionate citizen and a supercomputer programmed of all the knowledge of history, political science, you name it. Exactly. Booz lays out their vision for an ideal nation, and the AI is like this super-powered sounding board, analyzing each proposal, poking holes, suggesting alternatives. It's a wild ride. You know, what's cool is that the AI isn't just shooting down ideas. It's more like, okay, I see what you're going for, but have you considered this angle? What happens if X, Y, or Z throws a wrench in the system? It's like having a super intelligent, slightly skeptical friend who just happens to have access to a vast database of information. And it leads to some really thought provoking back and forth. But before we get into all the cool futuristic solutions Booze dreams up, we need to understand the problem they're trying to solve. And uh, well, it's a big one. They believe that all countries, even democracies, are essentially operating like dictatorships in disguise. Yeah, that's a bold statement. And the AI doesn't just let them get away with it. It pushes back, asking for clarification, yeah. digging into the why behind such a you know, provocative claim. Right, because it does sound a bit extreme at first glance. But when Booz lays out their reasoning, it actually starts to get interesting. And even the AI seems to acknowledge there's more to it than meets the eye. So Booz's main argument is that the root of the problem is the concentration of power. They argue that even in systems that look like democracies on the surface, power ultimately ends up in the hands of a select few, which makes the whole system vulnerable to corruption, manipulation, and ultimately behaving a lot like a dictatorship, just with better PR. And they connect this concentration of power to fear, which is interesting. Booz argues that people in power no matter how well-intentioned they might be, become driven by this fear of losing that power. And that fear, they say, leads to decisions that benefit the few at the expense of many. Right. It's like this self-preservation instinct kicks in and suddenly the needs of the people who put them in power take a back seat. And the AI doesn't just take this at face value either. It really digs deeper, asking Booz to elaborate on how this fear manifests, how it impacts decision making, and what specific examples they're seeing in the world today. So it's getting pretty intense. But you might be thinking, OK, that's a pretty bleak outlook. But what's the solution? Well, that's where things get really interesting. Booz outlines this entire system of governance for their ideal nation. Let's call it Country X. And it's built on this foundation of technology, transparency and direct citizen participation. It's important to note here that Booz's vision isn't about just slapping some tech onto existing systems, you know. They're talking about reimagining the very fabric of society with technology woven into every aspect, from how people vote to how resources are allocated. It's pretty radical. Yeah, it's next level stuff. And one of the coolest and honestly, potentially most impactful tools in their arsenal is this thing they call the People's App. And no, it's not for sharing selfies or arguing with strangers online. Definitely not. Think direct democracy on steroids. Citizens would use this app to vote on laws, policies, even how resources are allocated within their communities. And it goes way beyond just like simple yes or no votes. Oh yeah, Booz has thought this through. Imagine this. Before you vote on a particular law or policy change, the app uses AI to analyze it, breaking down these complex issues into explanations that anyone can understand, and it even presents potential consequences based on the decision made. It's like... Imagine if you could actually see how your vote might impact the economy, the environment, even your local community. No more blindly trusting campaign promises or trying to decipher confusing political jargon. Right. This app puts the power of informed decision making directly in the hands of the people. It's a pretty radical idea. It is radical, but I mean, like any major technological shift, it's bound to come with its own set of challenges and questions. I mean, the AI's analysis is only as good as the data it's trained on, right? What happens if that data is incomplete, biased, or even intentionally manipulated? You're hitting on a huge point there. It's like that old saying, garbage in, garbage out, right? Exactly. And Booz does acknowledge this challenge. In fact, they offer some pretty interesting solutions within their vision, which we'll get to a bit later. But for now, let's move on to another huge issue. Booz tackles taxes. 
And no, this isn't the boring part. Definitely not your typical tax day conversation. <laughs> Booz proposes this system of radical transparency, where citizens can track exactly how every single tax dollar they contribute is being used. Hold on, let me get this straight. We're not just talking about seeing a pie chart of government spending, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about being able to track individual tax dollars as they move through the system. That's exactly it. They argue that this level of transparency is crucial for building trust and accountability between the government and the people. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. So, like, mm -hmm. you'd be able to log into an app and see exactly which schools, hospitals, or infrastructure projects your tax dollars are supporting. Exactly. Imagine that a personalized financial statement for your contributions to society. That's kind of mind-blowing, honestly. And it's not just about tracking where your money is going, but also about having a say in where it goes in the first place, right? Right. Booze envisions citizens being able to allocate a portion of their taxes to specific sectors or even specific projects that align with their values. So let's say you're really passionate about renewable energy research. You could allocate more of your taxes to that area. Or if you think education needs more funding, you could adjust your contributions accordingly. It's like a choose your own adventure for civic engagement. But I have to ask, with that much individual control over where tax dollars go, wouldn't that create chaos? Like, what if everyone just funds their pet projects and nobody wants to pay for essential but maybe less exciting things like infrastructure maintenance or public sanitation? Yeah, that's a huge question. And to be fair to Booz, the AI in this conversation brings up those exact concerns. It pushes them to consider the potential downsides of such a radical approach to taxation. But what's interesting is that Booz has actually thought about these challenges and incorporated some solutions within their model which we're going to explore further in the next part of our deep dive. Okay, so we've got voting and taxes covered two things that usually have people running for the hills. Mm -hmm. But booze doesn't stop there. They've even reimagined the justice system, and this is where things get really, really interesting. So last time we left off with this pretty wild idea of handing the gavel over to AI in booze's ideal nation. Yeah, AI judges. It's definitely a lot to unpack. It really is. Yeah. And unsurprisingly, the AI in this conversation doesn't let booze off easy with this one. It pushes back hard, asking how you program something as complex as like morality or empathy into an algorithm. Because that's the big question, right? Can you really boil down something as nuanced as justice to a set of algorithms, even if they are super advanced? Right. And to Booz's credit, they acknowledge it's not that simple. They don't envision a world where robots are literally handing down sentences from the bench. It's more about using AI to augment the human element of the justice system, not replace it entirely. Okay, so less judge dread, more like giving judges a really powerful AI system. Exactly. Think about it. AI could analyze legal documents, precedents, case files, all the <laughs> stuff that takes human lawyers and judges hours, even days, to sift through and do it in a fraction of the time. And presumably without getting bogged down by things like emotional bias or fatigue, right? right. Exactly. The AI could flag inconsistencies, highlight relevant information, even run simulations to show potential outcomes based on different legal arguments. It would be like giving judges x-ray vision into the complexities of each case, helping them make more informed and hopefully more impartial decisions. That's a pretty compelling argument, actually. But then who gets to program this AI? What data is it trained on? Because if that's bias, the whole system falls apart. You're getting at a huge issue there, and Booz addresses it head on. They emphasize the need for complete transparency when it comes to the AI's decision-making process. They imagine a system where the algorithms, the data sets, everything is open for anyone to see and scrutinize. So no black boxes, no shady backroom deals. It's all out in the open. Precisely. Booz believes that radical transparency is the key to building trust in the system. And not just trust from citizens, but also from the AI itself. They argue that by making the decision-making process transparent and accountable, you're essentially teaching the AI to operate with integrity. Okay, I'm listening. But let's shift gears for a moment. We've talked about voting, taxes, justice, all super important stuff. But what about another core function of any government defense? How does Booz envision protecting Country X from external threats? Well, this is where things take an interesting turn. Instead of focusing on building a massive standing army, Booz proposes a radical idea, a completely voluntary military. Wait, really? No more drafts, no mandatory service? None whatsoever. In their vision, Serving in the military would be a choice driven by a deep sense of civic duty and a genuine desire to protect one's nation, not by obligation or fear of punishment. 
I can see how that would create a very different kind of military culture, but I have to ask the obvious question. What if nobody signs up? Do they just put a closed sign on the border and hope for the best? The AI actually asked that same question almost word for word, and Booz's response is interesting. They acknowledge that a voluntary military would likely be smaller than a traditional one, but they argue that it would also be more effective. Their thinking is that a smaller, highly skilled, and deeply motivated force is ultimately more powerful than a larger, less enthusiastic one. It's about quality over quantity, and they believe that people who genuinely believe in the cause they're fighting for will be more dedicated, more innovative, and ultimately more successful in the long run. So it's about shifting from a model of like brute force and overwhelming numbers to a more strategic, technologically driven approach to defense. Exactly. And they see this approach as being more in line with the values of a truly free and democratic society one where citizens are empowered to make choices about their own lives, including whether or not to serve in the military. That's a pretty radical departure from how most countries think about defense. But let's zoom out a bit. We've talked about these big picture systems, government justice defense. But what about the day-to-day -day needs of the people? How does Booz ensure that everyone in Country X has access to the basics, like food and shelter? This is where we see Booz's vision blending futuristic technology with a deep respect for community and tradition. They propose a system that relies heavily on community-funded kitchens to provide basic food security. Community-funded kitchens. So, like a modern-day soup kitchen, but on a national scale? It's a similar concept, but with some key differences. First, these kitchens would be funded and run primarily by local communities, not the government. Booze envisions a system where citizens can directly contribute to these kitchens, either financially or by donating food and other resources. Okay, so it's about empowering communities to take care of their own, rather than relying solely on government handouts. But how do they imagine coordinating something like this on a national scale? I mean, how do you make sure there are enough kitchens, enough resources, and that they're reaching everyone who needs help? That's where Booz's idea gets really interesting. They see religious institutions, particularly mosques, playing a central role in this system. They imagine these places of worship becoming hubs for food donation and distribution, tapping into these existing networks of charity and community support that are already strong in many cultures. So it's about leveraging those existing infrastructures, those communities that are already built on mutual aid and support, and using technology to amplify their impact. Exactly. They envision an app where people can find their nearest community kitchen, make donations, volunteer their time. It's about connecting people with the resources and support they need right in their own neighborhoods. That's a really interesting idea, but I can already hear the arguments against it. People pushing back on the idea of involving religion in what's supposed to be a secular system. You're right. It's a sensitive topic. And Booz acknowledges that it's a delicate balance to strike. But in their vision, these religious institutions wouldn't be dictating policy or imposing their beliefs on anyone. They'd simply be acting as facilitators, as hubs for community support, working alongside secular organizations and government agencies to ensure that everyone has access to basic necessities. So it's less about promoting any one religion or belief system and more about recognizing the role that these institutions already play in many communities and finding ways to integrate them into a broader vision for a more equitable society. Precisely. And this brings us to another area where Booz really throws a curveball, the concept of customizable law. Okay, this is what I'm really curious about. It sounds both incredibly cool and potentially terrifying. Hmm. How do you even begin to wrap your head around a system where laws are like, choose your own adventure? It definitely takes some mental gymnastics. In essence, Booz envisions a world where instead of having one set of laws that everyone has to follow, individuals could choose which legal framework they want to live by. Okay, I need an example here. Like, what does that even look like in practice? So let's say you're someone who believes very strongly in restorative justice, right? You believe that the focus should be on rehabilitating offenders and repairing harm rather than punishment. In Booz's system, you could choose to live under a legal framework that aligns with those values. And what about someone who has very different beliefs? Someone who believes in stricter punishments for certain crimes, for example. Could they choose a different framework? Absolutely. Booz imagines a system where there would be a range of legal frameworks available, reflecting different values, cultural norms, even religious beliefs. Okay, I see where this is going. But isn't that a recipe for utter chaos? Yeah. I mean, imagine trying to navigate a system where your neighbor is operating under a completely different set of laws than you are. You're not the first person to raise that concern, believe me. 
The AI in the conversation brings up those exact points, and Booz, to their credit, doesn't shy away from the challenges. They acknowledge that it would be a complex system to implement, but they believe that with the right safeguards in place, it could actually work. So we're back and trying to get our heads around this idea of customizable law in Booz's ideal country X. It's definitely a mind bender. And, you know, the AI in this conversation doesn't just let Booz off easy with this one. It keeps pushing back, questioning how you'd actually manage a system with so much, like, individual variation. Because it does sound like a recipe for chaos, right? I mean, imagine trying to, like, enforce laws when everyone's playing by different rules. Right. And this is where Booz's solution gets even more futuristic. They bring AI back into the picture, but this time as a sort of universal legal translator, if you will. Okay, instead of lawyers specializing in contract law or criminal law, you'd have AI lawyers who are fluent in every customizable legal framework in existence. Essentially, yes. The AI would be able to mediate disputes between individuals who are operating under different legal frameworks. That sounds incredibly complicated. It would be incredibly complex. And the AI would need to be able to not only understand the different legal frameworks, but also the intent behind those frameworks, the cultural context, even the individual values and beliefs of those involved. So you'd need an AI that's not just intelligent, but also empathetic, culturally sensitive, maybe even a little bit telepathic. It's a tall order, for sure. And the AI in the conversation definitely points that out. But whether or not it's achievable you know, in the near future, it highlights something really important about how Booz is thinking about this whole thing. Because this deep belief in the power of technology to bridge, <laughs> divides, and find solutions to even the most complex human problems. So it's like, if we can just develop AI that's smart enough and adaptable enough, we can solve anything. Well, it's not quite that simple. But I think it's more about approaching these challenges with a sense of optimism and a willingness to explore unconventional solutions. And that brings us to a broader question that underpins Booz's entire vision for Country X. Could this actually work? Exactly. Is it really possible to design a system, a society, that's truly equitable, just, and resistant to, you know, all the ways humans can mess things up? Or is this whole thing just a utopian fantasy? Interesting to think about, but not really grounded in reality. It's the question we've been wrestling with this entire time, right? Mm -hmm. On one hand, you have these incredibly innovative and honestly inspiring ideas. This vision of a future where technology empowers people and creates a more just and equitable world. And on the other, you have, well, reality. Exactly. Humans are complex. We're not always rational. And even with the best intentions, systems designed to create utopia can have unintended consequences. And Booz acknowledges that, too. They emphasize the importance of things like education, transparency, and citizen participation, not just as features of the system, but as safeguards. Ways to prevent Country X from becoming you know, another dictatorship in disguise. It's like they're saying, look, even with all this fancy technology, we can't just assume it's going to work perfectly. We need to be actively involved. We need to hold the system accountable. Exactly. And that's where I think this conversation with the AI gets really interesting. The AI isn't just playing devil's advocate. It's acting as this voice of caution, reminding us that technology is a tool. And like any tool, it can be used for good or for bad. So it's not just about the technology itself, but about how we choose to use it the values we embed in it, and the safeguards we put in place. Precisely. And that's something to keep in mind as we move into this future that's increasingly shaped by AI and other emerging technologies. It's not about blindly embracing every shiny new gadget or algorithm. It's about being thoughtful, being critical, and most importantly, being engaged. Absolutely. So, as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of AI-powered governance and customizable law, remember... The most important takeaway isn't whether we agree with everything Booz is proposing. It's about engaging with these questions, these possibilities, and recognizing that we all have a role to play in shaping the future we want to see. Well said. This has been a fascinating and thought-provoking deep dive, and honestly, I have a feeling this conversation is just getting started. I think you're right. This is something we'll be grappling with for years to come. And as technology continues to evolve, who knows what new possibilities and challenges will emerge. One thing's for sure. It's going to be an interesting ride. That's for sure. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder these big questions about technology, society, and the future of humanity. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and most importantly, keep imagining.